Good morning. Uh, welcome to Coffee in the Word. Got me and Brother Jerry this morning. Uh, Brother Phillips kind of manning, manning the cameras in the back. And uh, we just wanted to welcome you to come in, uh, contact your friends, tag them in. Uh, we're doing a little discussion. I think we're going to finish up today on uh, Once in Grace. I uh, want to do a little disclaimer before we get to the prayer time. Uh, we're absolutely not on here trying to argue with anybody or make anybody upset with us, but we want to know what the Word of God says. And uh, I think sometimes there's a lot of things that's handed down uh, through generations that becomes traditional. And uh, it's okay to question what we believe. I want to know what I believe and why I believe what I believe. Amen? And uh, with that being said, before we get too far in, uh, we need to uh, take some prayer requests. Uh, got a good friend of mine who wants to pray for today. His name is uh, Ronnie Messer. Uh, also, our good brother across the road, Brother Wayne Wooler, talked to him a little bit yesterday. Uh, he seems to be doing a little better. He's not in near as much pain, getting a few treatments and stuff, but really want you to continue to pray for Brother Wayne. Uh, do you have anything, Brother Jerry? Um, I do. You do? Don't Go ahead. forget Sister Melissa. Did you tell? Did you? Oh, get her? Right. that's don't right. Forget her. She's still at Vanderbilt. I think. Or did they get to come home? I don't think she got to come home. I think she's got a uh, kidney stone, right. and she's hoping to be able to pass it, but it's uh, it's rather large, so they don't know if they're going to do surgery or not. Also, Brother Robbie, he had went and had uh, they put another tube in. I don't think he had a, a stone, but he had some kind of a blockage there. Right. They're so, supposed to do a stent in, in, in him, so that. But they're supposed to go back in and do another surgery, I think, and put the stand in. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Brother Eddie Collins has got uh, surgery tomorrow. I think he's doing. A, they're doing a gallbladder surgery on mm -hmm. him. Uh, is there anybody else I'm missing? It seems like. Let's continue to pray for Brother Larry Frazier, dear, dear friend of mine, pastor at White Pine Church of God. Uh, he's uh, been having some health problems and really needs a he needs a miracle from the Lord. And that's what we're looking for at this time. Amen to that. Amen. Um, I think we still got a revival going on in one of our sister churches here in town. Uh, pray for them. Uh, just a lot of revivals going on. I, I think Cosby's got one planned here, here pretty soon that we need to pray for them. What's up? Uh, Absolutely. Speaking of Cosby, I see Brother Tim did, just uh, logged on. Be safe out there, brother. Uh, always uh, enjoy you guys. From yeah, be Cosby. listening. Don't be watching. Yeah, yeah we're going to be I hear him. He knows what I'm talking about. I seen him yesterday. I said, "Don't be watching." That's me listening because he drives a truck. So. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it, it's great to have uh, so many people wa watching and sending in their prayer requests. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's nobody sitting here. You just keep driving. Uh, stop watching. <laughs> uh, uh, we we need to remember. Uh, our brother John down there in Florida, still praying for them. Uh, I, I got to thinking about him last night. You know what? What a wonderful visit we had with them. Uh, you know, just so many uh, uh, sisters and brothers that uh, that are sick right now. Uh, you, you know what? I haven't heard here lately, and, and I don't want to throw throw anything uh, bad out there. But haven't heard that uh, C word, that COVID thing, in, in a while. Just so grateful that uh, God is is working the, uh, the miracles in people's lives and removing that out of this area. Amen. Uh, Amen. We had not had a case in a long time at, at Mount yeah. Vale. A lot of churches are still completely shut down. The Lord's been so kind to us at Mount Vale and we've been able to condemn. We, of course, we're taking, we're taking temperatures as you come in and offering gloves and masks and hand sanitizer and anything you want to make sure you're safe. We want to make sure everybody's safe. And, and for those that want to wear masks, uh, I encourage them to do so. Amen. Amen. Uh, but we've been so blessed at Mount Vale, and I know some churches that have just been absolutely devastated. Yes, sir. Uh, some of our sister churches had 30, 40 cases, and we've had like two or three cases in the last three or four months, and they've been kind of sporadic, and it wasn't somebody that was just right in here at that moment in time. So the Lord's really been kind to us. Let's remember our service tonight. We have uh, church tonight at 7 o'clock. Also, uh, coming up, our state bishop will be here this Sunday morning. 
Hey, that's Amen. pastor appreciation too. Yeah, uh, we had to bring that in there. Didn't he didn't want to throw that in there, but I'm gonna throw that in there. That's that's almost like a birthday. We, we, yeah. We have to bend him over. Well, can't bend him over our knees and whip him, but you know we we you do appreciate him. Up, yeah. yeah, we have to appreciate him. He, he's he's a pretty good guy. It's been uh, my privilege and honor, and I'm thankful. Amen. Hey, can I say this real quick? And I know it's embarrassing, but I'm on this side, and he can't hit touch me. But we're taking up a love offering for him and his family. And if you're from Mount Vale, or even if you ain't, you want to give something, just let them know. But we'll be taking up a special offering at the 1030 and the 815 service for them. So yeah, we do out. have those envelopes on the uh, They desk pass out them there. out. So uh, if you didn't get yeah. one, uh, get, get one off the uh, connections desk. Uh, if you happen to have missed them Sunday, pick them up off the desk. See, I wasn't here and I heard about all that. How uh, is that? I understand, man. Y'all know how to put a guy on the spot right here. Yeah. On, on we did. We put you on the spot. Sorry about that, brother. <laughs> anyway, I sure do appreciate it, and uh, very thankful to get to be the pastor here. It's not a, it's a, it's a privilege <laughs> and an honor. <laughs> hey, we got a singer out there. Yeah, in, I heard in, that in the yeah. lobby. He's he's doing a good job. Yeah, I think he's singing Amazing Grace or, yeah. or something. <laughs> Hey, uh, let's remember uh, also Sunday night, uh, uh, Miss Janine Brown is coming. We're very, very excited about her All coming. Right. She'll be here bringing the word uh, this Sunday night. It'll be her first time preaching at Mount Vale. I shot her the uh, address and she's real excited and everybody needs to come out. And here she's, I was in MIP with her and her husband. They're just wonderful people and been in ministry a long time and we're excited to have them too. Uh, is there anybody else we're forgetting? Is any, do we have any prayer there's requests a, that come in? There's an Eric Garrett said pray for him. Yeah, I've seen that. Him. Um, A.K.A. Froggy. And Froggy. The Froggy. <laughs> I know Frog, man. Yeah. Um, hey, don't forget real quick, our Easter celebration is coming up March the 27th. I don't remember the time, but come out, man. We're going to have a great time. I think there's going to be fun and games and food and Easter egg hunts and I think they got some big prizes laid out for them, so there'll be more as that comes. But uh, don't forget, that's the 27th. That's our Easter celebration. And so please come out, invite everybody you know. Also, this Saturday, uh, we have the senior adult uh, dinner and a movie thing. Is that right? Yep. Coming this up. Saturday. This Saturday's coming up. Uh, five o'clock, I get. Five o'clock, I, I think they're feeding, yep. and then they're going to watch. Is it War Room? Is that what they're watching or something? Um, you remember what they were watching, Brother Philip? The overcoming. Overcoming. That's right. That's right. Let's remember that. Try to come out, and uh, we'll let you in if you're under 50, right? You can come anyway. <laughs> and uh, But try to come out and support that and be a part of what. What if you're over 50 like Jerry? Yeah, yeah. You still like, come. Like Jerry, yeah. Brother, you don't have to bring that up every single time. We think it's nifty that you're over 50, you know. Ladies meeting uh, on Thursday? This Thursday, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, also the men's meeting. Um, Ours is the 18th. 18th the third I Thursday. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, God's Amazing Girls uh, meeting. And boys hey, will be Vicky, boys. will be here then. Vicky's still needing the uh, snacks and stuff for the, for that. Yeah. Okay. M make sure you get with Miss Vicky about bringing the uh, uh, the snacks. Uh, I, there's a list here, brother, about the. Uh, plain long black socks, laundry detergent, fabric softener, uh, about the, want to send to the encounter. Um, Don't forget pack a snack yeah. for Sister Becky and uh, the Children's Church. It's a sponsor child, $7 a week. Uh, they're feeding, what, 33, 33 children right now? Yeah, that, that was awesome to hear that they, they've gotten everybody covered, bro. That's pure religion and undefiled before the Lord right there. All right, anything else? Um, got the administrative bishop, he's coming, got that. Oh, look at that picture there, buddy. Yes, sir. Men's Ministry Fellowship, Thursday, March 18th. Cancer Support, March 18th, 630. Family Life Center, room 107. That's all I got over there. Okay, all right. Uh, do we have any prayer requests that has came in since we've been, uh, remember Brother Eric Garrett, uh, do we have any uh, prayer requests that came in? No, all my prayer requests is on the uh, camera sitting out there. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, hey, you're the guy that leads us in prayer. You want to you want to get us started this morning? I do, man. I love to pray. <coughs> all right, um, go ahead. Somebody gave me the authority to pray. Do you know about that? His name is Jesus. Amen. In to His that. name, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Oh, 
you have anything since we started, brother? No, we do. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a glorious day. We thank you for all our friends and our family. Dear Heavenly Father, I, I just pray that you lift us up, dear Heavenly Father, in, in your Son's name to continue to spread your word, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to, to touch our church this evening, dear Heavenly Father, that you that you touch the speaker and the preacher, dear Heavenly Father, to mold him, dear Heavenly Father, to, to speak to him and through him, dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, I feel tonight, dear Heavenly Father, that there's going to be a movement, dear Heavenly Father, through Facebook, through our church, dear Heavenly Father, that you're going to touch people, dear Heavenly Father, that, that your word has got something coming tonight, dear Heavenly Father, that there's going to be somebody to Touch, that, the, that you're going to open somebody's mind, dear Heavenly Father, that they're going to realize that the way that they've been walking is not the way that they should be walking, that they're going to be able to, to see, dear Heavenly Father, that your way is the right way, dear Heavenly Father. Yes. I ask you, dear Heavenly Father, to see that, that, that this church, dear Heavenly Father, has got the word that the, that the multitudes is going to be walking inside the doors, dear Heavenly Father. I, I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, that you that you do the same thing in, in D.C., dear Heavenly Father, in each state oh, capital, dear Heavenly Father, yes, yes, that this abortion God. thing, dear Heavenly Father, still takes off, dear Heavenly Father, oh, even yes. though that there's been roadblocks been put up, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you, dear Heavenly Father, that, that you wipe it out of the way, dear Heavenly Father, yes. that the right congressmen and, and the right senators get in the, in the stepping stones of the faith, dear Heavenly Father, that we, as church people, start helping them people See the light, dear yes, Father. Jesus. We see that there are states getting in the in the right light, dear Heavenly Father, that, that we start putting roadblocks up, that these women start seeing that this is not the right thing to do, dear Heavenly Father. We also see, dear Heavenly Father, that you that you see the people start lining up and start talking to these people. It's a right thing to do. A baby's heartbeat means that there is life in these people, dear Heavenly yes. Father. We ask you also, dear Heavenly Father, that you start putting these people in the right light of seeing these people's churches, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, dear Heavenly Father, open these doors, dear Heavenly Father. Tell them that the parking lot is not the place for them to be, but in these pews, dear Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. Get them out of these cars, dear Heavenly Father. Get them inside. Start shaking hands, people. Get them inside. Listen to these preachers, dear Heavenly Father. We ask you, oh, dear Heavenly Father, we ask you, let them know that your home is where they need to start worshiping, dear Heavenly Father. Touch these people that have these prayer requests, dear Heavenly Father. Touch their heads, dear Heavenly Father. Heal them from inside out, dear Heavenly Father. Remove this virus from this land, dear Heavenly Father. We feel that you are doing it right now. Let them know that you are there. Heal their hearts, dear Heavenly Father. Unwind that that depression, that oppression, Good. dear Heavenly Father. Let them know that you are there. Yes, Jesus. We pray for all of these things, dear Heavenly Father, through your Son's holy name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate that good prayer this morning, brother. Glad to have everybody that's on board watching. And like I said just earlier, uh, tag a friend and let somebody know uh, our uh, subject today. I think we'll finish up today. Once in grace, always in grace. And I left out last week with this statement. I said, I, I believe once in grace if you stay in grace. And uh, we talked a little bit last week about uh, typically there's two points of view. Uh, there's uh, Arminian, which, which we are, and Calvinist. And I think what's really happened to uh, Calvinist is it's kind of strayed from its original uh, intent. Uh, John Calvin uh, was a great man of God. A lot of denominational systems today attribute the, uh, him as being like a founding father. Uh, and uh, But I think what's happened is, is I think it's through the years, I think it's got misconstrued from what he said Amen. to what they're saying now today. And we, uh, we've raised a couple of generations, I'm afraid, uh, that uh, feel like that it's kind of instead of and, and instead of a doctrine that he taught that you would uh, continue in the faith he understood that you had to continue in the faith and that you would serve the Lord to the end of your life uh, it's kind of got misconstrued a little bit and it's it's uh, well a whole lot 
And uh, you hear a lot of people say, I couldn't go to hell if I tried. I, and I, my response is always, I sure wouldn't try if I was you. <laughs> you right. know, I, that, what that says to me is no fear of God. And the Bible said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, uh, you know, and I've, I've had people tell me too, they'd say, you know, you can, you can live any way you want to. And I said, well, I used to take issue with that, but I don't anymore. I, I, I agree with them uh, because I believe if Christ is in you, the hope of glory, you're not going to want to live bad. Amen. I mean, that's just kind of how I feel about it. Uh, and I came from uh, a hyper Calvinist church, and uh, and it was almost a, a form of uh, well, it, I, I don't want to say brainwashing, but it was it was preached every service. So people that struggle with that, the reason they have such a problem with it is not because it's such a strong biblical doctrine; it's because they have heard it over and over all their life. And the hardest thing for me was is when I came uh, out of that way of thinking and started looking more toward the Arminian views, you know, not of a works doctrine, but when I, the hardest thing for me was was to admit my parents, my mother especially, my grandmother, uh, a lot of my family that I loved dearly and had a lot of respect for and still do, uh, they believed that way. And it was almost like that I was going against them because that's what they taught too. Right. You know, and uh, there's got to be a place of reckoning in your life that you will sit down and say, I want to know why I believe what I believe. And I challenge you today for our good Calvinist brothers that are watching and sisters, I challenge you to read the Bible. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not discrediting you. I'm not insulting your intelligence at all. But we can be swayed. Hey, watch this. Uh, the American, uh, in American culture, uh, the uh, propaganda news network, they sway people all the time to believe, and they'll, they'll twist it any way they can to get you to see their side of it. And, uh, and a lot of Americans just think that everything that comes across the news is gospel, and 95% of it is just rhetoric from the left that's trying to destroy the country. And I'm not getting into politics, but it's the same way. With the, you got to question what they're saying. What you're, it's just like it's like going to a good restaurant and just sitting down and eating, not even asking what you're eating, just eat it, you know. And uh, I want to know what I'm eating, and I want to know that it's the right thing. And uh, as I began my as I began my journey away from Calvinism, hyper Calvinism, I mean I think I'm still I'm still a Calvinist as far as that goes, because I hold true to what he said. He believed that you would follow Christ to the to the end of days if you were, and if you did backslide, he said you would uh, come back to the Lord. So, uh, with that being said, uh, we're not here to attack anybody. We're not. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm not upset at anybody. I don't want anybody to be upset at me. I just want to. I. I want to pull your coat toward thinking about what we're trying to say because people tell me all the time. They say. Well, I'm just as sure for heaven if I was already there. And I said, well, the devil was there and he didn't, and he's not there now. I said, so what's that saying? That's right. You know, and how can, you know, how can, and I asked this question last week. It's a real simple question. It might be a little, it, it might, it might be a little too simple of a question. But the question I asked was, how can you go to heaven doing what the devil got kicked out for? You're right. I mean, how can you? I wanted, <clears throat> I've got a little scripture that I wanted to bring back up today. I wanted to discuss a little bit. And then uh, also, I wanted to talk a little bit about some folk that we know that walked away from Christ. Revelations 3 and 5. Look at the scripture. It said, he that overcometh. And that's what we're saying today. We're not saying that it's a perfect way. We're not saying that, you know, we're not saying that it, you can merit your way. We understand it's, it's uh, not of works lest any man should boast, but it's the grace of God. Uh, but Revelation 3 and 5 said, He that overcometh, implying that you and I have a journey to walk and, and implying the fact that there's some obstacles in the way to get there. What uh, hyper-Calvinism says, you know, hyper-Calvinism says there's not going to be anything to overcome. You're just going to shoot right on through and it don't matter. But I want you to understand, I believe it matters today, and that matters to the world. Because, see, your trial today that you're walking through didn't come to take you out. It came 
amen, more, more than you think to prove your faith, to make you understand that God is with you. And, not, and you know something, your trial doesn't have anything to do with you most of the time. It has to do with everybody that's watching your life. And how is the world going to know that Christ is in us, the hope of glory, if we don't walk through some things and overcome? They'll never know that he's a savior till they see us get saved. They'll never know he's a healer till you get sick and get healed. They'll never know that he's a deliverer until you get delivered from the things that's bound you all your life. So <clears throat> one thing that I feel that hyper-Calvinism does that it takes away from is it takes away from, uh, it takes away from the lifestyle that the world needs to see. I was talking, uh, I was talking this week and I'd stopped to get some fuel and, uh, Run and just some, uh, I call them my kind of people. The, he, they were rough looking young men and uh, came from the same place that I, I came from. And, and one of them struck up a conversation. And my, I mean, man, he messed, he messed up what he did. Because <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I just, I talked to them. They hugged me when we left and, and uh, they'd, they'd been a part of church and they were persuaded toward hyper Calvinism. And I mean, and I heard the language that came out of their mouth before they knew I was a preacher. I didn't tell them. I didn't. I don't go. In, I don't wear a preacher shirt and announce I'm a preacher. It, it allows me the ability to slide in on some people and talk to them. And and I heard the language, but effective immediately when they found out that I was a pastor and a preacher, effective immediately, then then they get then the, then they start telling me of how that. Jesus was their savior. And I'm not here to dispute that. I'm not, here, uh, I'm not here to argue with them about that. But I want you to understand, I would have never known they'd ever walked in a church. And I'm not throwing rocks at them. Hey, I've invited them to come here and they'll be welcome here if they come. But, but that's the problem I have with hyper-Calvinism right there. That's the right. problem I have. It does not challenge you to do better. Revelation 3 and 5 said, he that overcometh. I come today, children of God, to declare to you that it's an overcomer, an overcoming way. The Bible said, who is he that overcometh? Okay, it asks the question. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. That's what the Bible said. So how are you going to overcome? You're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of your testimony. Give me something, brother. Yeah. Jessica, and, and, and maybe we should, we should have done this right, right from the beginning, but Jessica says, what is hyper-Calvinism? Uh, I know it, she she says she didn't spell it right, <laughs> so maybe we should cover that just a li Hi little bit. Hyper Calvinism, hyper Calvinism actually leaves what John Calvin taught, and what John Calvin taught was he believed it was once in grace if you stayed in grace. Hyper Calvinism says that no matter what, that you can die in a bar stool and go to heaven. You know, when the Bible clearly states that no drunkard can go to heaven. Hyper-Calvinism declares that uh, you can die in an adulterous affair and go to heaven. It, it literally, absolutely takes all restraints off and it, al and it allows, and there's so many people that are out there today that are living these loose lifestyles that, that they have this false sense, of, it's a false sense of security that says I can have a relationship with God and live any way I want to. It's almost like saying I can be married and cheat on my spouse all I want to and they won't ever divorce me. Okay, she just posted something here. We probably should cover it just a little bit differently. She said once saved, always saved. But it's not quite the, the same thing as once saved, always saved, right? It, it's close, but it's not exactly the same. See, hyper-Calvinism, it's not been very long ago. It's been about four or five years ago. Some of the, some of the guys uh, that are real strong with that in this area here, mm -hmm. Uh, they got together and had meetings where they believed that they even had to repent. After you repent when you're saved, right. they didn't think you had to repent again. And uh, and what and what we're saying as uh, as Armenian, if you will, that God never takes away your choice. They're saying there's nothing you can do, absolutely, totally nothing. And uh, may, maybe we should maybe we should jump right here just for a second, and let me give you just a good example right here. Well, let's look at 1 Corinthians. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's, maybe I should have added that in, into my list right here. All right. Uh, let me see if I can find where I'm at now. Uh, you said 1 Corinthians? Yeah. 
it's uh, starting about verse 9. Let's look at it. It said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we start a list. I'll tell you what you do. You go to, you go to Galatians chapter 5. And let's look at these scriptures just for a second. It said, The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What hyper-Calvinism says is the unrighteous shall inherit the kingdom of God, but they cannot. It said, be not deceived. That, that's a scary thought right there. There's a lot of people who are deceived who think anything will go with God and it won't. It said, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infeminate. Hey, and listen, I'm not walking on eggshells. Listen to me. I'm not being mean about this. I want you to understand that homosexuality is added into that list of people. And look, look what it says. It, it, it said, nor infeminate. Look that up. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covets, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11 gives us all the hope in the world, though. It says, and such were, past tense, some of you. What, what happened to them? Why ain't they that way anymore? Hyper-Calvinism says you can be that way, but this scripture declares, Paul writing to the Corinthian church, he said, and such were, it's a past tense. These things of old things have to pass away in our lives. But you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, if you have Galatians, would you, uh, I think it's about 17 where it starts. Okay. Uh, he, now look what Paul, when he, when he writes to, for uh, two Galatians, to the Galatian church. Look, he reiterates this list. Go ahead, brother. He said 17? Yeah. Uh, for the flesh, lust after the spirit. Oh, I'm sorry, spirit. brother. 19, I apologize. That's my uh, fault. Uh, let's see. It wouldn't hurt anything to read that, but. All right. Uh, 19 says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, 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 idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, em emulation, I'm going to turn it this way, bro, emulation, wrath, strife, seditious, seditions, uh, seditions, heres heresies, uh, uh, envious, enviousness, uh -huh. murder, murderers, drunkenness, Revelings. Revelings and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, that, that, that's where it ends. Look what he said. He, gives, he basically in Corinthians and Galatians names you and he gives you a list, children of God. To go by, he says. He says these are the people who can't go to heaven. Now, what well, hyper Calvinism says, these people get to go to heaven anyway. Now, I, I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just. I want to know how you're going to get by what that says. How is it that it says that? And then, and then, and then we have today. And can I just tell you this? Please don't be upset at me. But can I tell you this? They do not preach that overseas. It, I'm sure it is in certain places, maybe a little. But listen, when you go to China, they don't have no such doctrines. When you go to Africa and you preach in the jungles, they don't preach such doctrines as that. It's not there. It's prevalent in America because it's convenient. But this list, two times, Paul said in Galatians, he said, I tell you again, as I've told you in times past, that they that do these things shall not. Come on, somebody. It's what he said. It's the book. We're going to believe the book or we're going to believe what man has told us all our life. They that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Are you trying to write me off, preacher? No, I'm the guy that's begging you to come on into righteousness and serve the Lord and be a new creature. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Corinthians said, and such were, speaking to a, a past tense, such were some of you, but you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been justified in the name of the Lord. And, and I'm, not saying that, I'm not saying that God's looking for a reason to kick you out. I'm not trying to take away your security on your salvation. I want you to be secure in your salvation, but I don't want you to believe a lie and be damned, right? The Bible says, the Bible says Jesus said himself that at, at, the, at the end of days, you know, they're going to say, hey, didn't we, we cast out devils, we did mighty works in your name. 
And, and he'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And see, a lot of people take that scripture for hyper-Calvinism and say, well, he, ha he knows everybody. But when he, when he said, I never knew you, he was talking about intimately. I was never in a relationship with you. And that, that's the problem that I have. The problem I have is you have two different places where the Bible gives you specifically, it specifically says, these are the things you can't do and go to heaven. You got any questions or comments in there? Uh, just some amens. I got a little uh, thought here. I think ahead. it's important what you do is Hebrews chapter 10 and 26. It says, for if we sin willfully, Come on, bro. I don't know if you can. He said, we sin willfully. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. So that's being after you've been saved, after you know what's happening. Right. He says, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. But we know Jesus is the only sacrifice for sin. But what they're doing is, is when they sin willfully, they're rejecting that sacrifice. Absolutely. They're rejecting it all. Yes, sir. And I believe it was Paul, wasn't it? Paul in Corinthians or Galatians said, he said, if I don't put this body under subjection, he said, I could even be a castaway. Yeah. And he that yeah. wrote over two-thirds of the New Testament, he that should have been as godly as anybody, if he didn't keep up with it, then he said, I could even be cast away, even though I preached the gospel. Yeah. So Hey, and I've heard people say this about that verse text right there. They're, they're wanting to say it was a castaway like somebody hit out, hit out on the boat and got in anyway. That's not what he's saying. He said, I will absolutely be cast away from God. I know we covered this last week a little bit, but Second Peter, hey, Peter was a, Peter was good at backsliding. He knew, he knew all about it. He was a backslider, was he not? And, but uh, let's let's go there just for a second. Here's what Jesus said to Peter. Peter comes. Uh, Jesus comes to Peter just before the the crucifixion, and look what he says. He said, "Satan hath desired to have you." Can I tell you today that Satan has desired to have you? Can I? And I look. I'm I'm a realist. Okay. I I want you to tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Don't let it meet me in the judgment. I want to know the truth and, and let me deal with the truth. He, uh, and reality is this right here. Jesus came to him and said, Satan hath desired to have you. And can I tell you, if you're living in sin today, uncontrolled and out here in the world and doing the things of the world, then Satan already has you. I, that sounds mean. But I won't tell you the truth. I want you to know and understand that whom the Son has set free is free in his deeds. Free indeed, that's what the Scripture says. And he said, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. And probably today there's somebody that's watching me and watching this little podcast or watch it a little bit later and your life is being sifted and you don't even know why. And you think, man, I got saved when I was 12 years old and, and I was baptized and joined the church. And, and I don't have to worry about that anymore. I want you to understand that might be why the sifting is happening right now because Satan has you. Yeah. He has you. If you're being sifted, he's sifting you. That's what Jesus said. That's right. right. You got something, brother? No, he's just putting the okay. scriptures in I here. thought you wanted to plug in there. but And he said, but I have prayed for you. Now watch this. And I'm going to get on my little tangent here. I'm going to jump up on my soapbox. And uh, jump up on a hickory stump and say, boys, let me tell you what. what watch, watch what he said. Watch what he says right here. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail you not. See, that's the difference. We're not legalists. We're not saying it's what we do. We understand that it's what Christ did. That's what we put our faith and our hope and our trust in today. It's what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. But, but just, just listen just for a second. Let me give you some just real simple scriptures. The Bible said faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And when you don't go to church, and you don't read the Bible, and you don't pray, how can your faith not die? How can you say you're in the faith if you're not hearing the Word? How can you say you're in the faith if you never go to church? How can you say you're in the faith? See, faith, faith is an action word, right? Well, can I tell a real good, I'd like to tell a funny story on uh, Jerry. Would anybody out there uh, on the World Wide Web like to hear oh, one on him? Lord. Here we go. We, uh, Brother Jerry's dear, he's been my buddy, and we just not we just hit it off right off. And he likes uh, messing with old cars, and we, we work on old stuff to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. My wife says, why don't you come to bed? And we're out there beating on an old car. But anyway, we had went up and seen a friend of mine one time, and uh and uh, I've got an old Model A, and we were working on the old Model A. You remember that? And we were coming back, 
Uh, Let me stop you just a second. You uh, said that, and, and the thing lit up. Heart, heart, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> okay. People, Take, people just go for these stories. They you love you, that? man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to laugh at Jerry at Mount Vale. But uh, yeah. anyway, we're, we were coming out, and uh, we were coming out. Uh, what is the name of that road out there? It's it's out next to Skids on the other end of Morristown and all that. And we were coming out through there. Dover, Dover Road. We come off Dover Road. We come down that stop sign. Don't help him. Yeah. I'm Jerry's on. Yeah. <laughs> and Jerry's sitting on the passenger side. Well, I knew I was privy to the information here <laughs> that there's a turning lane when you cross when you cross back over to get on. And there's a little turning lane, and you, as long as there's not anything coming this way, you go across. There's a tractor and trailer coming up the other side of the interstate or the other side of the four lane there. And when I cut out across through there, Jerry didn't know there was a turning lane or a little side lane there that you could get in. And I shot out across through there, and in his mind, he didn't timed out that I was going to pull right out in front of that tractor and trailer. He didn't know I was just going to turn left in that little lane right there and let that tractor and trailer go by. And I have never seen a man run in a seat in a car. <laughs> but he was running, slapping the side of that car and squalling like he, like he. But you know why did he do that? Because his faith said, "I'm about to lose my life. This crazy preacher is going to kill me." <laughs> now that's a funny story, but uh, but I, I, <laughs> look at these smiling faces. Oh, I'm telling you. And and it's not River doing it either. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Hey, I'm not trying to be. I'm not trying to be ugly, but I mean, it took a week to harm the pucker out of the seat over there. You know, <laughs> he got tore up on. His faith said I, that the pastor was going to kill him, but I, I already knew there was a turning lane there that I could get in. And uh, faith will put you to action. He was running in his seat trying to get away from that thing. And I want, I want to declare to you today that your faith in Christ will call you call you out from among the world. Cause you to be a different person. Hey, I'm not. I'm not selling you a doctrine of perfection. And oh my God, I can't be good enough. You can't be. No, you cannot. You cannot be good enough to go to heaven. But you can put your faith and hope and trust in the one who who is. Amen. The the Bible said, He who knew no sin, he kept the law. All the law is fulfilled. All the law was fulfilled in him. Amen. When we accept him, we accept the fulfillment of the law. We're not trying to do away with the law. He is the fulfillment of the law. But also you have to understand that you have to continue in the faith. You have to feed the faith. You have to read your Bible. You have to go to church. I know you can live as good at home as you do in church. I hear it all the time and I don't believe it. I didn't believe it then. Don't believe it now. And the problem that we have is, is we've had a couple generations that's come up who feel like, that they don't have to do anything to stay in the faith. But you do. You've got to go to church. You know, it's required of a good steward to be found faithful. Amen. Amen. You got in my, my defense, my faith was telling me I was going to heaven right then, right there. I think he was shouting in the seat, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about your arm, but I'm pretty sure it was sore. <laughs> yeah, he jerked the arm off. Deborah Eastup says, Acts 17 and 30, and the times of the ignorance, God worked at winked at. winked at but now commanders all men everywhere to repent right amen that's right hey when when john the baptist when uh when john the baptist came on the scene he was preaching the gospel of repentance and when jesus came on the scene he was preaching the kingdom of heaven but what was the message the message was repent that's the right. kingdom of heaven is at hand and mike wells uh it says that's the reason it says to repent daily. We need to live a repenting life for sure. That's right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I wanted to get back to Brother Peter. You know, Brother Peter. You know, he said he said I'm not only willing. You have to give Peter this, man. He he said I'm not only willing. I'm not only willing to fight. I'm willing to die. We read we read and uh, that he was the one that cut off the high priest uh, servant's ear, but he still denied the Lord. And you know, if you think think with me just for a second, him and Judas did the same thing, did they not? It was exactly the same thing. I believe that the Lord would uh, would have forgave Judas. Brother Philip and I, we were, uh, last year, we, we were sitting at the Mount of Olives. To the left of the Mount of Olives, you have to think something, in, in, uh, in Israel, 
in Jerusalem, uh, a acre of ground probably starts out around a million American dollars there. But if you go to the left of where we were at, it's called the Valley of Gehenna, the Gate of Hell. That's what it's really called. And that they believe that that's where uh, they believe that's where that uh, Judas went and hang himself. They know that it's where uh, they know it's a cursed place, mm-hmm. and you can't give that property away there. Nobody wants that property there because it's cursed, uh, and it's connected to property that's selling for a million dollars an acre, and it's where it's where Judas went and hang himself after he denied the Lord. Think about Judas with me just for a second. I'll get to Second Peter in a minute. But think with me just for a second about Judas. The Bible said he called the twelve. How are we going to deny that? I know the Bible said Satan entered him. Yes, and yes, indeed. The scriptures declares that, you know. But the Bible said he anointed the twelve. He sent the twelve out to preach the gospel. To say that Judas never was saved, and that's the argument today. Yeah. The argument is he never was saved. Well, then God called a lost man to preach the gospel. According to that, I mean, if you're going to believe it, let's believe it, you know. And uh, then God called a lost man to cast out the devil. Why was, why was Judas called to cast out the devil? Why was he called? When the seven sons of Sceva, they said, Paul, I know, Christ, I know, but who are you? I mean, I've got some valid points. If, I w- if you want to take issue with that, I would love to hear your argument against that. You know, that he was not a follower of Christ or a believer in Christ because he was. You know, and I read to you last week when they cast lots, when the lots fell on Matthias, when they cast lots to see who would take his place, the Bible said he fell by transgression. So sin will separate you from God. Amen. Amen. Got anything, Sir? brother? Anybody? No, oh, I'm just, just going by what you said there, you know. It, you had a, a sermon uh, once, if I'm remembering right, that says, you know, not everything that that was said to Judas was uh, was maybe uh, uh, privy to us. So right. w- whether it was said to open ears or not, you know, God d- done what He did uh, for the furtherance of the kingdom. Is that not correct? Yes, sir. That's exactly uh, right. So, uh, if he hadn't have done what he done to Judas, you know, may, maybe it's uh, 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 what was for his purview and not ours. Right. First John three and eight. Look at it. It said, "He that committeth sin is of the devil." Now, let's 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 dissect that just a little bit. Uh, James said, "If we say we have no sin, then we're a liar." Solomon, the wisest man except for Christ said for there's none who sins not but but John wrote in little John 1 John 3 and 8 he that committeth sin is of the devil and what he was saying was I'm not trying to take away from the scripture but he's talking about those that have fallen back into sin hey sometimes sin's not what you do I mean Hey, we're, we understand. We know. You know. We know we're not supposed to lie, cheat, steal, rob banks. We know we're not supposed to drink liquor. And, That's right. I mean, but the Bible said also uh, that it, sin was not necessarily what you do. Sometimes, it's what you don't do. Uh-huh. You know, to know to do That's good. good yeah. To know to do good. The Bible said, and do it not is sin. So we're constantly in this battle against the against sin. And what John was saying to us is he that falls back into sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Well, look, okay, look, if Christ is in you, the hope of glory, look at the rest of the verse. He said, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hmm. If he lives in you, he didn't come to employ the works of the devil. He come in, he, if he's in you, he come to destroy the works of the devil. We're not preaching you a doctrine of perfection. We're not saying you can be good enough to get to heaven. We're saying that, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. Our sin uh, becomes offensive to us, or it should. A young man right here, not been saved very long, worked on him for years and years and years, just started coming, 
I'm so proud of him, his family. They're doing really good. And uh, I spent a lot of time with him. And he had one of the worst mouths that I ever heard on anybody. And those are the kind of guys I like. I want them rough because I know I, I come from there. And, and this is what he said to me the other day. He was so distraught because he got upset and he said a bad word. He's a young Christian. He's learning. And, and he came to me and he said, am I going to hell? And I said, Lord, have mercy. God, no, just repent. Repent. Repent and turn from your sins. Repentance is not, uh, sorry, I got caught. You know, there's a lot of people sorry they got caught. But repentance means that I feel toward it the same way Christ did. You know, and that's that's the thing. Uh, little John said, First John, he said, he said, this was the reason Jesus came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And I guess my question to you is, are you growing in grace and in knowledge? Are you, every day of your life, are you, are you learning from your mistakes and your sins and turning from, you got to learn and turn, you know? If you mess up, we say you got to fess up, you know, to the Lord, unless Brother Jerry wants to get his uh, a backwards collar and turn it on and <laughs> I'm, I'm being mean. Hey, uh, I got you something, brother. Okay, let's have it. But <clears throat> next time we open up, up service, you know, tonight even, let's, uh, let's put signs up on, on the, uh, the walls in here. The sin knots and the sinners, just like a grocery store, you know. It's if you want this in, in your aisle and, or, or this in your aisle, and if you're going to sin this week, sit on this side so you'll know who to preach to and who not to preach to. <laughs> if you're going to praise, sit on this side. If you're not going to praise, sit on this side. Okay, right. that way you know who to preach to and who not to preach to. Right. You know, just just that way God knows who to fall to and who not to fall to. Right. Okay. It's going to be the easiest church you ever pastored to, you know. Well, the problem is they're not going to sit in their correct sections. That's right. <laughs> that is always going to be the problem because they don't have an idea of whether they sin or didn't sin. Yeah. You're hitting the point. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. I like what Sister Debbie uh, yes. Debra said. Judas sold out for 30 pieces of silver. And this world uh, has churches that have sold out, not preaching the truth for fear of losing members. That's and, right. and it's the truth. Hey, uh, and I know I'm opening a real bad can of worms right here. Uh, and I'm saying if you're a young Christian, I'm on your side. I, uh, I'm, I'm the most uh, uh, probably lenient guy to help you get to the place in faith that you need to be to stop some of these things. But... Uh, I've had some prominent people that got really upset at me because I told them they could not have a little wine for their stomach's sake. Yep. I told them. And the problem that you have with that is, is if you read, you know, if, and I know you guys have covered that, but uh, when you read, be not drunk with wine, where's in excess? A lot of people want to take that for an excuse to say, well, I can drink as long as I don't get drunk. Uh, social drinking is straight out of hell. Help me, somebody say amen. Just wave amen. at me. I see, yeah. I seen somebody get mad and upset about that, but it is. And uh, and the, and the thing is, is we don't have biblical wine in America. You don't have biblical wine here. The biblical wine is, uh, I think Brother Phillips said, in uh, it's twenty was it twenty four glasses, twenty three, twenty four glasses of of biblical wine uh, to equal the alcohol content of. Just one. Just one here. Yeah. And it and and a lot of people fall in that trap. And if you're a young Christian, I, I understand, but now that you know that that's not the case, we have strong drink. If you want to talk about it, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty, we have we don't have biblical wine. The wine they had you could give to a little child over there. But and and, and even the at the feast, everybody said, uh, Art Link letter done that little thing, uh, kids say the strangest things or something. Remember that? That little black girl on there? She He said, what is your favorite uh, Bible story? And that little black girl said, when Jesus turned water into wine. And he said, well, what is the moral of that story? She said, when you get, run out of wine, get down on your knees and pray. That's what she said. She didn't know. She's just a baby. But 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 think with me just right here just for a second. And, that, and that's a big, big thing. Uh, in church today 
but think with me just for a second. When, when the ruler of the feast at the wedding said, you saved the best wine for last, the best wine was unfermented. It didn't have the, it didn't, it had, it was, and they used fermentation for, uh, or, or light fermentation for preservation because there was no refrigeration. Right. And you can take, and I've, I've had people get mad at me right here at Mount Vale and quit, not come back because they could not convince me that it was okay and it's not okay. Hey, I'm not condemning you. I'm just saying, pray about it. I'm, I ask the Lord, ask the Lord. And especially if you're young in the Lord, that's a, that's a whole different situation. And and you're learning to walk and you're learning and God's speaking to you and teaching you as you go. And and I'm, you know, I've seen God allow things for a little while in seasons in people's life. And as faith began to mature in their lives, then they begin to lay aside. That's why we're to grow in grace and knowledge of Him. Amen? That's right. We got anything else? No. Uh, uh, Brother Henry is watching this morning. So. Hey, hey, Brother Henry. Yeah. Good to see you, buddy. We love you. All right, let's let's grab uh, let's grab one more little. We were talking about Peter backsliding, what Jesus said to him, and after he backslides, then he he writes, and he tells us about salvation and repentance. He says in verse twenty two and twenty, he said, "For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." Wait a minute. Well, you could preach a week right there. After you come to know Christ then you realize you automatically have that on the inside of you that tells you right from wrong. That's right. You, all, you have to. See, that's the thing. When we can live in sin and it does, and the Lord does not deal with us, how many has ever, how many has ever spanked your child? You know, you know why you spanked your child? Because it was wrong and you wanted to correct it. And you know what? The Bible said that us, for us, that ye that are without chastisement, are illegitimate. That's right. That's what it says. Brother, Brother Leon Jones would use a different word, but I, I <laughs> and I know it's in the King James Bible, but <laughs> but uh, he said, you know what God said? Really, he said, if you can live in sin and I don't deal with you and you're not corrected for it, you don't belong to me. Hey, I tell you what you do. You run across the road over there when you see your kid, your neighbor's kid, uh, in doing something, all night, just beat the brakes off that kid. I'm not telling you to do that, but think about that. You're not going to do that. You know why? Because it's not your child. You know what? God's the same way. Yeah. And if he's not correcting you for your sin, then you do not belong to him. Plain speech, easy understood. If it's wrong, the Lord will correct his children. Amen. You know, when I really got saved, I mean, for real got saved, I joined the church, I did all those things, but I have no conscience of sin. But you have to understand with me that when I got saved, the first thing I realized was when I sinned, I knew it. Yeah. Immediately, I was under conviction. There's a difference. Amen? He said, uh, well, let me get back to my, I run that rabbit plumb to death. And, For after they've escaped <laughs> the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He's saying you can escape the pollutions of the world just by knowing Christ. He said, they are again entangled therein and overcome. He says, the latter end is worse of them than the beginning. The next verse said, for it had been better for them to have never known. If you don't know God, where are you going when you leave this world? I mean, it's real simple. He said, for it had been better for them to have never known the ways of righteousness than to have known it and turned from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So Brother Peter said, hey, I got some experience in backsliding. And he says that you can escape the pollutions through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he said, if, you, but if you're entangled again therein and overcome, that goes back to 1 John, he that committed sin, he that falls off uh, the, the turnip truck, if you will, if he goes back out into sin, is of the devil, right? Right. And I'm not, I'm not preaching you or teaching you a perfection doctrine. I'm telling you, it's a repenting way and it's a stay in the faith way. Got anything? No. All right. Sir. All right. Uh, and he said, after he said it would have been better to have never known, then he said, but it's happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog returned to its vomit again and the sow, the, 
that was washed returned to the water and in the mire. Children, if you make it to heaven, you're going to get there by the grace of God. But the Bible said that grace is a teacher. That grace teaches us to deny ungodliness, worldly lust. Grace is a teacher. Grace is not a get out of hell free card. Grace will teach you to come out from among the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure we'll get some comments later. <laughs> Maybe get some phone calls on this one, but uh, I'm not trying to make it too hard. I'm just saying, all you, and, and here, here's the deal, okay? The whole thing is, it's not really hard. We make it, we complicate it and call it Arminian and Calvinist and all, but here's, here's the real deal, a relationship with Christ. He said there's all the law of the prophets hang on two commandments. Love the Lord and love your neighbor. And that's what, that's what from the beginning, that's all God ever wanted was for you and I to love Him. Amen. What you got, brother? Uh, Sister Sue says this, this verse is in the Bible a lot of people use. When I first got saved, I worked with a, a woman and she got me this. Uh, this is, uh, verse 28. Yeah. I gave them eternal life. It says, and they shall never perish. And the B part says, uh, no one will snatch them out of my hand. It says, verse 29, my Father who gives them to me, and then greater than all, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. But if you don't want to know the truth, you can believe this and not the whole truth. Well, hey, and I'm 100% in agreement with that scripture. Uh, I cannot make you unsaved. That's right. I can't, I, no, in the, the King James, I'm not real sure what version it was, but in the King James, you know, he said, my father that gave them to me, he's, he's uh, he, essentially, he's more powerful than all, and no man can pluck you out of the Father's hand. That's exactly right, correct, we believe that. Listen. You can't make you you can't stop me from going to heaven, but God never took your choice away. He never took your choice. In the garden, there was a choice. You know, uh, I know it's Old Testament. People say, "Oh, you can't use Old Testament." All Scripture, Second Peter three and sixteen, is given by inspiration of God, and profitable for doctrine. You know, and you have to understand that. Uh, yeah, you, you have to understand that the Bible said, "Choose you this day whom you will serve." Right. As for men, it's a choice. God never takes your choice away. God planted the garden, man, east of Eden. But he gave them a choice. He said, I want you to serve me because you love me. Not out, of, not out of duty. He wants you to serve him because you fell in love with the Savior. Because you know that, uh, because you know Romans 5 and 8 said, you know, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, but God commended his love toward us. Hey, I mean, if you want to try to go that route, let's, you know, uh, uh, let, let's go to Romans. Who shall separate us from the love of God? I mean, it's the same thing you're trying to say, or they're trying to say there, you know. Uh, I'm, you know, God loves the most vilest sin. But you have to make the choice. He told his disciples to take up their cross every day and follow him. It's a daily walk with God. There's nowhere that you can excuse yourself to live in sin. Amen? There's one little passage of Scripture that says, if you love me, he said, you'll obey me. Yeah. It pretty much sums it up. I mean, yeah. really in itself. He loves us, and we can't be snatched out of his hands, but if we love him, we'll yeah. obey him. Right. I know people don't like to use the Old Testament a lot, and they always say Jesus didn't, you know, he, we don't live under the law, but he said he didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to fulfill it. Absolutely. If you really look at that, it said in... I forget if, if it's Matthew or where, but Jesus is talking. He said, you said, if thou shall not commit adultery. He said, you know, that's a sin. He said, but I'm telling you this, if a man looks after a woman and lusts after her in his own heart, he done committed adultery. So he took it from, he took it up a notch. He didn't take it. He took it from an actual act to the intention of the heart. Mm -hmm. He said, if you hate your brother, he said, you done committed murder. Right. So he, God didn't come, Jesus didn't come to destroy it. So if he come to fulfill it and take it up a notch, that we ought to follow all that before and all that after. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's John 10, 28. What she said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them, they follow me. 
See that even that even that verse before you get into all that. Look at what the verse said before. It says they know my voice and they're following me. Yeah. Hyper Calvinism says you don't have to. Hyper Calvinism, Hyper Calvinism says I got my get out of hell free card, man. And he said, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But he didn't say you couldn't. Right. You can't. You have the choice. I, I like these two comments here. Deborah Eastep says you you draw it away. Uh, by your own lust, uh, and that's true. You lust after what what you you want, and it will draw you away. So you have to lust after what God wants. Right. Uh, maybe I, I should have changed the word lust, but you you know what right. I mean. That, yes, sir. Uh, Connie Inman says yes. God gives us a choice, and, and I choose God, and I thank Him for everything He does in, in my life. Uh, you know, and I think that's what God wants us to do. He He wants us to want. Him in our lives, and and whenever we finally choose Him, everything changes in the course of our life from that moment on. That's that's the whole aspect of, of, of choosing Him. Everything aligns in, in our in our plan that He has planned out for our life. From the time that we change, when we take off that old coat and put on the new, as as the song goes, everything in our life changes from that moment on. You know, our, our verbiage changes, our, our lifestyle changes. Everything that we have going on in our life changes from that moment on for the better. Right, exactly. Noth you know, we, we will have challenges. We will have things uh, that, that will be uh, an obstacle in our life, but it is for His plan for our life. Yes, sir. Yes, but, sir. but it is going to be for the better in the end. Yes, sir. And it's not about living the perfect life as some have taught. Uh, Luke 18 and 8, Jesus saying, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? He's looking for somebody that believes and trusts in him. That's right. The faith is what we're freely justified by faith. you got to have, I mean, then if, if that be the case, then you have to feed the faith. That's right. If you don't feed the faith, you don't have faith. Well, without the faith, it goes to what Stephanie just posted, you'll be feeding the flesh, and the flesh is going to take you into the wrong part of it. it you're you're going to go into a devil's hell. What she says here is, is is exactly what you're talking about. He said he would never leave us, but how many times do we leave him sitting on the sidelines, either out of being ashamed or because we want to put our flesh first? Wow. And whenever we put our flesh first, you know that that's it. And, and sometimes we do it out of either forgetting where we're at or or, or forgetting to to go back and say, oh man, I, I did that. And I I need to go and and ask for forgiveness. We as Christians make those mistakes. You know, uh, you know. I remember when whenever I was a new Christian, you know, I I forgot to to do this right or that right. Even when I came here, you know, I, I had a friend set me straight a few times. Uh, you know, and and those things happen to you, right? And you've got to remember: once saved, always saved. Will put you in that devil's hell. Yes, sir. I said that, not him. Yes, sir. You you've got to remember that those types of things are going to eat away at your soul if you do not live your life for the Word. Amen. Amen. Because it is that living life inside you yes, sir. that will put your life back right. Yes, sir. I, as Sister uh, Priscilla Johnson said, sin separates us from, from our God. He doesn't leave us. We leave Him. That's 100% correct. Amen. I love what Sister Stephanie said, too. Uh, he said He wouldn't leave, but we, but, he, but we leave Him. And you know what? A lot of times I've heard people say, well, where's God? And then the answer is always right where you left Him. That's right. You know? Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty simple. I think it's pretty cut and dry. Here's what I think, though, is I think that we have heard things all of our life that we don't, we want it to be true, you know, and we want we and we've just been taught it all our life, and we've never investigated uh, what the Word of God said. Hey, I went on a journey, and uh, when I first got in the Pentecostal Homeless Church, and my journey was to disprove sanctification. I didn't believe in it. I didn't believe what John 1 and 12 said, to as many as received him. What about that scripture? 
To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Wait a minute. It talks about a process here. Talking about you doing something. You know, it's not what you do, but it, continuing in the process. And I was going to disprove sanctification. I was going to disprove uh, Arminianism or however you want to say that. And you know what? I found myself uh, time and time and time again having to go back and question everything I was taught as a kid because it was in the book. And when I read it in the book, I believed it. And today I want to challenge you. I don't want to make you mad. But I want, I want you to be challenged enough to look at the scriptures and say, hey, wait a minute. You know what? Hey, thank God for what mom and daddy uh, did and what they taught us. But, you know, they, don't have, they didn't have all knowledge. We don't have all knowledge. The Bible said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So the word of God is a proceeding word. You don't have it all figured out. I don't either. But there's one thing I do know of a surety that the Bible teaches against living in sin and going to heaven. Two different places. He gave us two lists. If you're having trouble today with that, uh, if you'll reach out to the church and you want to talk more about it, I'd be glad to talk to you. One-on-one, -on, -one, on the phone, don't make any difference. Uh, but I would read that list and I would look at that list and I would say, hey, you know, if that's in my life, I better get it out because Paul said, no, you're not, that I've told you in times past. And I tell you again, that they that do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What you got, brother? I got uh, two that it scrolled up here. Sue Muncy says, we got to be different from the world. Amen. And and, and if you think for one moment that, that you're all right with, with what you're doing, then you're not. You've got to be able to remove yourself from the world. Um, I, I watched two sermons yesterday, and one of those sermons reminded me so much of, of not only what I watched you do Sunday night while, while I was gone, but you've got to remember social media and social justice has got to be playing in your mind. Remove yourself from that. Put yourself in the real world. Come to church. Put yourself inside a building and get God inside your heart and in your mind because that's got to be the place that you do everything. Put God first. Amen. If you don't have God first and God in your mind and put your family in a place to where they hear God above all others. Get this get these electronics out of your 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 mind, your heart and everything and make it to where they are not around your dinner table or, or around everything that's going on in your life and talk to your kids and, and your your family and and make it to where every single thing that you do is about God. Save your children. Read your Bible and make your family saved. Make it to where they understand that God is in your marriage and in your family. Make it about Him and everything else will be all right. I promise you that. I live too long the other way. Flesh is not the way. Faith is and faith by God. We had one there, Amanda Cummins. That's my little cousin in there. Hello, little cuz. She said that's why it says that we're in the world but not of the world. That's exactly right. Yeah, it's real amen. simple. I mean, because the world will send you to hell. You know? Amen. Uh, Deborah East up there. It says the message is to bring the truth to keep you in the faith because there's a real devil that is out there or out to kill, steal, and to destroy. And it's not that you're mean, but you have to put God first, and that's why it's important to make it out of the out to the house of God, so you get the word and grow in grace. Amen. 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 Says, "Our brother Tim Arms, he's done turn loose of the steering wheel, brother Philip. He's and clapping, clapping his, his hands. hands, man. I didn't see that on there. Yeah. I hope he's in North Carolina. Not yeah, not yeah. Let's see. Amen. <laughs> hey, let me add this real quick. I, I just thought, you know, a lot of times we know that when we're born again, there should be a change. That's yeah. right. And if there's not a change, then you need to check it. Because right. here's the thought: is and I heard a guy say this, and it was a great illustration. He said, if I promised you, Jerry, that I was coming to your house at 5 o'clock this evening and I didn't show up till about 7, 
And I come to you and you said, where was you at? And I said, well, I had a flat tire and I was changing it. Tire bounced out in the middle of the road and I got run over by a log truck. First of all, you know I'm lying because if I got run over by a log truck, there'd be some change in me. That's right. I'd either be mangled, membered. You've been seeing me in the hospital or dead. So if that would change us, and if we encounter the hand of a mighty living God that washes our sins away, there ought to be a change. That's right. Yeah. Amen. There ought Amen. to be a change. If you've encountered God, really encountered Him, there ought to be a change in your life. And like Pastor said, sometimes it's progressive, but there's something down on the inside of you that says, hey, this is not the way to live no more. Amen. Hey, that's Amen. good. Hey, uh, it belittles the experience in God. It really does. Hey, uh, I'll, we'll leave with this thought right here. Uh, think with me just a second. Uh, and I love to ride motorcycles, and I'm an old gearhead guy. And, uh, I don't golf, fish, or hunt, you know, but I like to turn wrenches and ride so motorcycles. I like to work on Fords. And, oh. Hey, and I, I mean, hey, but I did. The Lord, I really did. I repented and sold my Chevrolet, and uh, I'm, I feel so much closer to the Lord, and I don't even have one. I had one for a while, you know. <laughs> I'm playing. Don't get mad at me. I'm, you, I'm picking on these boys. They pick on me. But uh, you know, uh, if you're going if you're going to join up with uh, with the outlaws, that's predominantly the motorcycle gang in Tennessee. I think they claim to own Tennessee. You can't you can't join you can't join the Hell's Angels or the Outlaws. I ride a Kawasaki. They would they would absolutely string me up. There's requirements to join. You gotta have a Harley Davidson, and I'm not against them. I like them, uh, <clears throat> but not only that, there's a criteria you must meet to be a part of that. Serve for so long, you know, as a uh, apprentice, and all those things that you gotta do, and then it's required of you there that you know that you follow the rules and be faithful to the clubhouse. They call it church, you know. So uh, how much more? I mean. How much more, if you're going to be a part of the kingdom of God, as Brother Philip said, it, we're belittling the, the uh, born-again experience to say that it don't change you. Hogwash. I do not accept that. It makes me so aggravated. People, people want to run around and act like, I mean, you, there's no evidence. There is absolutely no evidence if you're living in sin that you know Christ. That's right. One guy said, I'll say this, and we got to get off here. One guy uh one guy uh, told a preacher one time, a friend of mine, he said, I sinned every day and lived like the devil every day before I got saved, and I've done the same thing after I got saved. And the old preacher said, didn't do you no good to get saved in, did it? That's What's right. the difference? I mean, you know. You should just stay the same. Just stay the same, you know. You know. There is a change. The Bible teaches it all the time. Yes, sir. Significant change. Yes, sir. You have got to remember whenever you asked for the Lord to get get inside you to get with a family that, that truly loves and cherishes you like, like a church family like what we have here. And I'm not saying come here. You ain't got to. You got to. Come here. I'll let, well, we, we got somebody up there in Delaware. She's got a long drive. To, Sister, every time you're down here, you come visit. Yes, ma'am. You come see that's us. That's right. Not too far to drive for a church that's alive. Come on in. Uh, hey, I like that. You was a poet and didn't know it, did you? <laughs> My feet show it, though. Yeah. They're long fellas. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not about uh, stealing folks from another church, but hey, if, you, if you're around and you, you got time, come see us. But but you've got to you've got to be around people with like mind like like thoughts, man. It, it just makes your life so much easier. Look here, bro. Mike's got a really good point right here. He said you're making a mockery out of the baptism because baptism represents the old man, uh, and the new man arrives. The old man dies, and the old man arrives. So he, there has to be a change. That's exactly That's right. right. Baptism. I mean, after we're born again. It's an outward experience of an in, uh, of an inward experience, and we're saying outwardly what happened inside is we took that old man to a watery grave and we buried him, and he's resurrected. That's right. A new creature. It also represents death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We understand, but it's symbolism saying that old man died. He's dead. Paul said, "You're dead, and your life is hid with him." Good God, it's time to quit. He said, "I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live." You're right. What, I mean, what about that, you know? And uh, we ought to reckon ourselves dead. Romans 6 and 1 said, you know, shall we, it said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? 
God forbid, how shall we that are, there's my word, Brother Mike brought up, dead to sin, live therein any longer. She's going to come see us. <laughs> yeah, Jane All said, right. said she really, really would like to come visit. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Someday. We'd be glad uh, to see We would you. love to have you, Sissy. All right. Anything hey, else? Just remember the service tonight. I, I, I told you guys I really feel that tonight is going to be an awesome, awesome night tonight. Yeah. I, I, I think the, the Holy Ghost is already here. I, yeah. I can feel it. Hey, with, uh, uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, hey, and with, uh, let me back up here to it. With, uh, where did she go? Well, I had it there. It's going to read it. Uh, and and uh, with Stephanie's comment, man, I oh, believe Stephanie. she, yeah, with Stephanie's comment, I believe we might let her preach. She had a good comment on there, so that one, yeah, that's right. She said he said he'd never leave us. And how many times do we leave him? She might need to preach tonight, sissy. Just go ahead and get you some notes together, and and we'll be waiting on you. All right. <laughs> anyway, hey, we appreciate everybody and all the good comments. And look, uh, we uh, really do not want. Uh, we don't want to uh, offend you, make you upset. Uh, oh, amen to that. Okay. <laughs> Said Jane was already like family. Come on. That's down. right. Come on in, Miss right. Jane. Uh, we, we didn't come to upset you, but we really did come to challenge that doctrine and to prove to me anywhere you want to. I mean, I, I'd love to sit down with you. And I sat down with some good guys that uh, love the Lord that really had some strong uh, debates that way. But I've never had anybody that could convince me once I read the Bible for myself that it was a free license to sin, right? That's right. And uh, uh, if you have any comments later on or something, uh, you can probably get us on the website there on the Facebook. And, uh, and we would love to sit down with you. Love to meet you. Hey, if you don't have a home church, uh, we'd like to invite you here to Mount Vale. And uh, if you go to a dead church, I'm, I'm the pastor said, so just come on, get out of the dead church, come where it's alive, where God's moving. Hardly ever is there a service that somebody don't rededicate their life, somebody's born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, miracles, people being healed. Why wouldn't you want to go to church where the book of Acts is alive and well in the house of God? Amen? Amen. Anything else before we get off here? Don't forget our address. Yeah, 1330 East Dumplin' Valley. And that's in Jefferson City, uh, 37760. All and, right. uh, hey, don't forget that uh, we got service on Sunday at uh, 815. Uh, Sunday school or small classes at uh, 930. And this big guy, he preaches every Sunday at 1030. And, man, if you ever want to uh, see an airplane spin or see this guy do, do some awful good preaching, come on down. We, we, we really want to see you guys come on in and, and uh, grab a seat. We really want to see you in, inside somebody's church somewhere, but we really want to see you here. Amen. And most of all, we want to see you in heaven. That's right. Amen. All right, this will conclude us on the Once and Grace. And thank you for tuning in. God bless you. Come see us if you can. Amen.